Good morning, Great Oak Grove. Happy New Year to y'all. This is another year that the Lord has allowed us to see. We ought to be glad and rejoice in it. We serve an awesome God. He brought us through a hectic 2020. Can't wait to see what he's going to do in 2021. I know his word is true and he keeps his promises. So he promised he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So he brought us over that bridge. So I know he'll take us over whatever challenge is going to be in 2021. So we ought to be foot pat and happy. Happy as a hippopotamus just laughing. Saying, thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. Amen. We thank all those who are viewing us by satellite or however you're viewing us, YouTube, however. But we thank God for allowing us to be able to broadcast and minister to you all. Once again, we serve an awesome God. And I'm not going to prolong the time. Uh, I was scripture reading to be coming from Isaiah chapter 43. If you have your Bibles with you, uh, please turn to Isaiah 43. Starting around the 15th verse. And we'll climax around verse 21. Isaiah 43, starting at the 15th verse. And it reads, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which makes a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bring forth the chariots and the horses, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched and told. Remember ye not the formal things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers and the deserts. The beast of the field shall honor me. The dragons and the owls, because I give water in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Amen. Amen. The grass withered and the flower fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. Amen. Let us uh, lift up God in prayer and begin this Sunday morning service. Father God, we just once again just humble and as we know how, Lord, we, we, we're gracious and we're thankful that you allowed our eyes to open to a brand new day, Lord. You didn't have to, but your mercies are renewed just on this morning. So we thank you right now for new mercy and we thank you for grace because your grace is sufficient. It brought us thus far in our lifetime. So we're thanking you right now. Bless this service this morning, Lord. Bless everyone that's veering this morning. Bless us one by one and name by name. But then, most of all, Lord, bless the man of God that's going to break the bread of life. Keep him deep in your love and hide him behind your cross. Allow him to minister to us, Lord. Allow us to have a listening ear, Lord. A listening ear to your mighty and powerful word that leads and guides us, Lord, each and every day of our life. And we thank you right now. We thank you for all that you've done. But most of all, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus, the one who hung on that old rugged cross without saying a mumbling word, the one who gave his life so we might have life. We thank you right now. Jesus dying in for our stead, Lord. You didn't have to, but you did. So we're gracious and we're thankful, Lord. Thank you for allowing and giving us strength to open our eyes to this day. Allow us to be better on this day than we was on yesterday, Lord. Please forgive us for our sin and you search our hearts. If you find anything contrary, please cast it out as far as the east is from the west, and let it never rise again. But we thank you, Lord, right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bless every family, bless every man, woman, boy, or girl that's watching this program. Allow them to continue to trust and believe and lean on you, Lord, because you are mighty good leaning post. So we thank you right now. I pray this prayer in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. 
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. It is a blessing to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. Why don't you all join us for praise and worship because he's worthy of all the glory and all of the praise. Tears streaming down my face. I will bless the 
Happy New Year, Great Old Grove family, and to all who have uh, joined us by way of uh, these digital communications, and I pray uh, that the holidays have been festive and safe for you uh, and yours. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank thee for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this year. Uh, we don't know what all it will entail, but one thing we do know, uh, that whatever happens, it's not coming by you by accident. And so, Father, we stand on the tiptoes of expectation about what you're going to do in our lives during 2021. And, Lord, I pray now that you would bless us, that we would gather our collective thoughts, that we may be able to hear what heaven has to say on this day. Uh, thank you, uh, Lord, that you would say enough through this clay vessel that those who do not know you and the pardon of their sin but want to get to know you for themselves. And what a better way to start off a new year uh, than to know uh, that we're part of the family of God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. This holiday season was, I'm sure, different for all. In uh, my family, it is no different. And this uh, Christmas Eve was, was different uh, for us. Uh, we've always had uh, family gatherings, but something unique happened uh, to us this uh, Christmas Eve. My daughter, uh, Jordan, who's uh, what we call a fashionista, and uh, she's into uh, designing clothes. And she had us to listen, and uh, not listen, but look, at a documentary, at a documentary uh, that it was involving how the rap uh, era has influenced uh, the design of, of clothing and, and, and fashion. And it, it was quite interesting uh, to me uh, that most of the power of expression that has come through the African American uh, people has come by way of uh, songs. And then I was watching uh, that, uh, watching Saturday Night Live, and it was interesting how after watching this documentary, and they was talking about how uh, the different uh, rappers have gotten into uh, design and fashion. And then uh, the skit uh, that was on Saturday Night Live uh, shared how uh, if you put words or express your feelings in a song, uh, then that keeps you or exempt you from being sued for, for li liabilities. And so uh, I think that when I think, when I thought about it, I thought about how music has been the vehicle by which we have been able to express ourselves regardless of what was going on around us. And so I took time out, and I wanted to just look at the different songs that have made an impact in our uh, society throughout, uh, throughout the, the years uh, for, for us as an African-American people. So from the documentary that Jordan uh, uh, forced us to watch, and then I started thinking about people uh, like um, James Brown who we know as the godfather of soul, and how he used his lyrical expressions at times to uh, share his disgust or his uh, frustration about what was going on with our people. And one of the songs that became popular by the godfather of soul was Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. And it came during a time when black people were losing their identity because we were more consumed about what other people thought rather than what we thought about ourselves. And so Jane Brown decided to write the lyrics to the song, Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. And then I kept looking and I was watching and, you know, James Brown was uh, one of my favorite entertainers, as a matter of fact around six, seven, and eight years old, I, I tried to be a little 
uh, James Brown and myself uh, had a lot of moves back then, and uh, between he and Michael Jackson, uh, I just formulated and tried to make up some stuff, made up, make up dances uh, as well. But that was one uh, that I thought was in particular, uh, I think something that we can identify with our scriptures today. And that song that he wrote, that, that song was titled, Papa Got a Brand New Brag. And I want to title uh, this sermon with that same title that we used for that song, Papa Got a Brand New Bag. And when you, when you view the song or when you understand the history of it, you have to understand the culture of uh, the blacks at that time. Uh, the word Papa uh, was used as a slang word because we normally would call men Papas and call the women Mamas. And so when he would come and say Papa, got a brand new bag. He was not really using that expression to show uh, parental involvement, but he was just really using it to say that a brother or a man, a male figure, had a brand new bag. And then when he would talk about bag, the word bag was not something that you carried groceries in, but it was, it was another slang word that was used by our people. And whenever it, it, it gave the idea that if somebody had something new that was going on or some theme or something that uh, they, they could identify, that they, they called it their bag. It was mostly used with musicians that would use that expression to identify uh, the, the, the favorite genre of music that they were into. They, they would say something like, if, if, if you were in... Uh, uh, rhythm and blues, they would say, well, that, that's my bag. If you were not into country and western, they would say, that's not my bag. And so it would spread over to other things that they were familiar with, and whenever they wanted to identify whatever it was that they would watch this old school word that they were digging in, that they would say, uh, this is my bag. And so here, and, and then uh, the other side to it is that it, when, when James Brown wrote it, he wrote it during a time when he was in conflict with his, uh, with his record label, the record label that he had a contract with, King's Record, and when he was ready to move on uh, without them, he, 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 he came out with this song saying that Papa got a brand new bag, but now it was interesting, he would use the words brand new bag, but it wasn't necessarily meaning that he was doing uh, a, a something new, but, but here he was really trying to express that he was about to do something that they would be familiar with, but he would do it in a whole different way. G give me a little time and to work it out, because I need you to understand. Jane Brown, as I shared, was known for his, uh, state, uh, known for his dancing, and in the lyrics of the song, he would mention certain dances like uh, the jerk and the mashed potato. And what he was referring to is that he was about to now uh, share his own James Brown, James Brown style and add it to these dances. In other words, that you've seen the jerk before, but you've never seen it in the same way with the James Brown twist to it. You, you heard... Uh, and people seen and were familiar with doing the mashed potato, but they didn't see it, the mashed potato, with the James Brown twist in it. And so it, it, it God, in his own way, through the Holy Spirit, uh, took, that, uh, took the backgrounds of that history of that song and its title and lifted it up to me and then placed it and laid it on the lap of Isaiah chapter 43. And I want to, I want to thank Reverend Houston for reading uh, the words to it, but I want to focus more, uh, I, I want to look at uh, all of, uh, of Isaiah chapter 43 and the time that is allowed uh, to me, but, but, but I want you to focus more on verse 19. Isaiah verse 19 says that, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye know it, I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, 
when Isaiah was writing this, and you got to understand Isaiah's background. You got to understand some of what was involved and in going through his mind, his heart, and his head as he was beginning to share what was going on in Isaiah chapter 43. You Bible readers would know that Isaiah was one who lived uh, at a time when the children of Israel was going through their periods of exile. And it was that, it was during this time that they had been captive by the Babylonians. They had been captive by the Medes and the Persians. And now God was bringing them back after allowing them to be captive by these other lands. And if you, if you look at uh, chapter 43, you will see that it all connects to everything else because it starts off, but now, thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. And so you can tell by verse 1 that it's connecting uh, chapter 43 with everything else that has taken place and everything else that Isaiah has, wrote, uh, has written uh, up until this particular time. And look at the introduction of verse 1. He said, but now thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. It's like now God is introducing himself to Israel by first letting them know that you belong to me twice. He says, first of all, you belong to me because I formed thee. And then secondly, you belong to me because I redeemed thee. God is saying that you're mine first out of creation. And then secondly, you belong to me out of redemption. He's, he, he's signifying or he's distinguishing his relationship with the children of Israel because all of us know that everything that was made was made by God. But yet God said, not only did I make made Israel, but I also redeemed Israel. And then he says something else, that I identified them as belonging to me. And, and, and if brothers and sisters, we don't have nothing else to shout about, it, it seems like somewhere in our lives that we ought to take time out to thank God that we belong to him. And then he says something else in here that I want us to at least underline. He says, fear not. And whenever ever you get a chance and you read through chapter 43, you will see over and over and over again, God shares with the children of Israel to fear not. He says, fear not, fear not, fear not. And then after, uh, before I sit down, you'll see why he shares with them that you don't have to fear. And the reason why, well, let me, so I don't want you to think that this is some mystery sermon, that the reason why you don't have to fear is because we belong to him. Uh, when you think about all that has transpired in this past year, thank God that whatever has happened, we can still hold on to the fact that we belong to him. We, we, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but at least we know who holds tomorrow. And the one that holds tomorrow is also the same one that holds us. And he says, because of that, you, you don't have to fear. So, so let me push through because I need us to, to, to see what God is seeing, because when I think again, he's saying that he's got a brand new bag. His papa here has a brand new bag, but, 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 but look at me, with me for a little while so you can see all that God is trying to say. Verse 14, he said, Thus said the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I sent to Babylon. I have sent to Babylon, and I have brought down all their nobles and their Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel. I am your King. God keeps pointing it over and over again that understand that the captivity that you've been in, it didn't come to me by, by accident. I, I put you there for a reason. And, 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 and brothers and sisters, I believe that when we think about our lives and think about this new year, I, I think that God has shown us enough by just keeping us here that give us, that, that ought to give us a sense of expectation, ought to give us a sense of excitement that the fact that no matter 
what we've been through that we didn't go through it by ourselves. God was always with us. That's what he's talking about here. He's saying, I, I know you was in captivity in Babylon, but while you were there, you weren't there b b by yourself. I, I am the Lord, the, the, the Holy One. I am the Creator, and I, I, I'm your king. He said, thus saith the Lord, I'm in verse 16, but thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. Do you see that? God is now saying to them that what I'm about to do, it, it's a new thing, but it's an old thing. I'm, it, it, it's, it's, I'm doing something new, but, but I'm, doing it, uh, I'm doing it in a way that, uh, well, well, in other words, I, I, I'm doing something old, but I'm doing it in a new way. I, if I can handle, I, I'm the same God that, that, that led you through the waters of the Red Sea. I'm the same God that, that led you through uh, the turbid waters of the, the Jordan River. And, and what I believe that God is trying to say to them is that if I did it before, you ought to know I can do it again. And, and I stopped by to tell us that, that, that this is a word for us, I believe, to, to understand that, that, that I hope it is not really in some vaccine, but I hope ought to be in the Lord. And, and then he said, he said this, watch this. He, he says that, that, that not only did I make a way in the sea, but, but, but also uh, I, I brought forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power that they shall lie down together and they shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as a toe. And then he said, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. And stop right there. I need to put a pin there because, because it's, it's a little confusing here uh, uh, to me. Uh, it, it's a little confusing uh, to me, Cookie, because he, he says, remember ye not the former things. Do, do, do you see that? It, it is as if God is saying to us that, 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 that I don't want you to hang on uh, what I did, but, but uh, what, what I've done. He, he, he first tells them what he's done in the past. But, but then he turns around and, and says to them that uh, forget about what I've done in the past. And, and, and so I don't, I don't know, I, I don't know, Curse, it just kind of uh, confused me, God. You, 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 you're telling me the story but as if you want me to remember what you've done. But yet in verse 19 it says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. And so I, I wanted to try to figure out what was God trying to say? And, and here is what I believe that, that he's trying to say to us. He, he wants them to forget, he, he wants them to forget the failures of the past. In, in other words, what, what, what God is saying to us that, that it, it, it's humanly impossible to forget the past. It's humanly impossible for us to forget. But God said that it, what he's saying is that uh, don't let all of our hope in him be based only on what he's done in the past as if it does not allow us to have the faith that we need to know that if he's done it before, he, he can do it again. And in other words, what, what God is saying, don't stereotype me. Don't, don't, don't think that I'm only a God who can lead you through the water. Don't, 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 don't think that I'm only capable of bringing you through the Red Sea and your Jordan River experiences, he, he said, don't, don't just hold on to the old things. And, 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 and I'm saying that, brothers and sisters, because I don't know about nobody else, but how often have we been in conversations where people who want to keep saying, bring us back the old time religion, and I'm okay with the old time religion. I think that there are fun memories about the old time uh, religion, but, but, but I stop by to tell you that I don't serve a God who only worked in the past, but I serve a God who can work right now. I, uh, my faith is not based on just what he's done in, in the past, but, but, but the but cause of what he's done in the past uh, ought to help me and give me enough confidence uh, about what he could do in the present. And that's what he's talking about, Kim. Look in verse 19, he says, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye know it? I will even make the way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. And, and what he's saying is that I not only can, can build sidewalks in the, in, 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 in the river, but, but I also can make, uh, I can make provisions for you in those desolate and desert places. And when you think about what we've been through in 20. 
2020 and this pandemic, and you hear more about, uh, you have what they call uh, deserted areas where there are some communities in our country where food is not as available as it been. Maybe God sent this pandemic in order to get the attention of those who are less fortunate than we are. Now everybody seemed to get on board about making sure that everybody had something to eat. I believe that's God working, saying that I can provide food, I can provide shelter, I can provide even in those areas that are desolate. And then then here's what he says. He, he says in verse 20, the beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, desert to give drink to my people, my chosen people. You've got to watch how God works. God is saying that you all get caught up on me feeding just you, but guess what? As God, I'm responsible for everybody. Have you ever, have you ever thought about how God in his own omniscience has worked out in his own purpose a way for those who don't have people to feed them that they can feed themselves off the land? Have you, have you ever l looked at it? I, uh, when, when, when I, I was looking at, uh, when, when, when I want, really want to try to get smart, I, I try to find uh, uh, channels uh, that can really speak to me. And, and, and so I, I turn to uh, the, 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 the animal channel. And sometimes it's amazing the stories that they use to show us how God has built in the animal DNA how they survive when they don't have anybody bringing them food. And, and, and sometimes, and, well, I, I, I don't want to get into that, but sometimes I get a little, I, I get a little, um, uh, I get a little agitated when I, and I watch and, 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 and thank God for people uh, that love animals, but I'm concerned sometimes that our focus, our focus is more on loving animals than we do people. Uh, you, you've got people who will uh, give money uh, to hug a tree and, and won't give nothing to hug a child. Yeah, that, that's just me. I, 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 I'll, I'll give that sermon to you to next time. But, but, but watch uh, what else he says. He says, in verse 21, he said, this people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. God wants us to not stereotype him because of what he's shown us in the past. But, but, but God wants us to be a witness for the present. But, but then he, he does something else that, that, that I, I need you to read it because I, I don't want you to miss it. He said, this people have I formed for myself. D do you see that? He said, they shall show forth my praise. Now, 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 when you read it, it is as if the verse is written in future tense. It, he, he says, they shall show forth my praise. D d do you see that? He, he's saying that I, 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 I'm trying to do a new thing. That I don't just want people to show praises unto me because of what I've already done. But I want people to praise me, to show forth praise to me for stuff I hadn't done yet. You see, we, we have people who love to praise God because of what he's done. But how many of us can give him praise for what he hadn't done yet? How many of us can, can, can give God praise on layaway? He hadn't done it yet, but, but we ought to praise him right now. In other words, brothers and sisters, I, I'm, I'm, I, I want you to see that God wants you to give praise in 2021 based on what he hadn't done yet. So, so you don't have to wait until the end of the year to praise God. You ought to praise God right now. Uh, you, you remember when the children of Israel had made their way through the Jordan River. And the Bible says that Joshua told the children of Israel that I need you to obey God's word and march around the walls for seven times on the seventh day and one time on six days. 
And he's saying, now on the seventh day, after you march around that wall, I want you to give God a shout. And when you give him a shout, the walls will come tumbling down. In other words, what what I'm trying to show us is that you don't have to wait until the walls of the pandemic tear down. We ought to praise God right now. Because if God is going to do a new thing, an old thing, in a new way, what we ought to have enough confidence in is that if God allowed it, he also can see us through it. And so what I'm looking for right now is some 2021 people who don't mind giving him praise right now, although this is the first week of the year. You you don't have to wait until the battle is over. You ought to be able to shout right now because of what we know God can and will do, not only based on what he's already done, but if you know in your heart that the future is in the hands of God, you ought to be able to praise him. Because if God has brought us to it, I believe that he's gone enough to bring us through it. My excitement for 2021 is knowing that I serve a father that's got a brand new bag. And and whatever happens this year is not because God don't know it, but it's because God is trying to get some praise out of those of us who belong to him. Last thing I want to show you, and don't miss this. God is saying that when you look at what he's doing for the people, he's saying that I chose you, not because of you, but I chose you because of me. And I wonder, brothers and sisters, that as we live our life and go back, go about our daily activities, how many people do we interact with that get excited about God because they see the excitement for God in us? Because if we're not excited about God, those of us who say we know him, those of us who have a relationship with him, why would others want to be a part of what we are part of right now? Let's pray. Thank you, Father for a new year. Thank you, Father, for a brand new bag. Thank you, Father, for new hope. Thank you, God, for new excitement. Thank you, God, for new mercies. Thank you, God, for new adventures. Thank you, God, for new horizons. Thank you for the anticipated works that we know that you're going to do. Lord, we know that this day did not come to you by accident and everything that we've gone through, you were already in charge. And so, Lord, we ask that you would help us to not just get caught up on our past and forget that you are the great I am, which means that you're always in the present tense of our lives. And then, Lord, as we deal with whatever this year has before us, help us to know that we can handle it because we're walking in it with our hands in your hand. In the name of Jesus, all agree said, amen. 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 Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Most eternal wise God, we thank you for last night laying down. And Lord God, we thank you for a great pastor that you have given to us. Oh, we had great old Grove Missionary Baptist Church. We thank you for the family, Lord. And Lord God, we thank you for all members that are sitting here. We ask blessings over them and their loved ones, Master. And Lord, we ask blessings over all that happened so far. But Lord, you gave us your word that you would help us through the harder times. And Lord God, we see Torah and everything in the world right now. But, Lord, we know that you're a God that you you do not lie. You're a God that you bring us through all things, Master. And, Lord God, I I stand here this morning, Lord, asking your blessings over each and every person that is sitting here. And mainly, Lord, I ask blessings over my daughters. Lord, the situation they're in at the moment, Lord, would you bring them through this uh, pregnancy that they're in? 
And Lord, that they may give your name to praise, God. And thank you for what you will do, Master. That you haven't spoke what you do not do. God, we know that you're God that stand beside your word. And Lord, we thank you so much for what you're enabling us to do. And Lord God, we mainly ask blessings over the first family, Lord. And Lord, as I speak, bless Sister Tracy Trailer as well. You know the things she's going through, Lord, but I thank you the way she is each and every day. And Lord, I give your name the praise and glory through it all. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.